thought the black back perch stew was actually pretty tasty. And now that you know it's spicy, you won't be caught off guard, right? Why don't we give it another chance? Once was more than enough. <laughs> Let's guess where you're from. No. Lynette's not usually so forthcoming about what she likes, but this time, well, she's expressed it in more ways than one. I guess you've rubbed off on her too. <laughs> or maybe your cooking is simply too delicious to resist. The next time our paths cross in Fontaine, you'll have to fire up your cooking skills for my other siblings as well. How does that sound, oh great master chef? Well, what do you say, oh great magician? Oh yeah? Well then, I'll have to clear my schedule. I think I'm finally getting the hang of chopsticks. Practice makes perfect, right, friend? Uh, yeah. Well, Linny and Lynette picked it up in no time, but they're naturally dexterous. Unlike me, it's taken me a lot longer, but I'm slowly getting there. Oh, uh, speaking of chopsticks, in one of the shows we've seen here, someone performed a conjuring trick using a bowl and chopsticks. So, if I want to be a good magician's assistant, I need to keep practicing. Calorie surplus detected. Digestion mode engaged. I've literally never seen you eat so much. Yeah. Well, Lenny and I are usually careful about what we eat, because we have to stay in performance shape. That, plus it's generally bad manners to overindulge at the dinner table. But once in a while, it's nice to treat yourself in the company of family. Besides, if I'd waited until my brothers were finished trying to outpolite each other, the food would have gone cold. <laughs> you know, that's actually a very fair point. Seafood and nothing that takes too long to cook. The rest is up to you. <laughs> hmm. I had my eye on a Duchess Temptation, bamboo shoot soup, and golden shrimp balls. But I suppose they'll have to wait for the next time. <laughs> but that could be years from now. Oh, Madame Farzan looks so deflated all of a sudden. Um, please still try to choose dishes on the expensive side, okay? What's up, Layla? Ah, I feel so much better now that I've gotten some food in me. Delicious food really does wonders for one's spirits. You know, I never thought you'd take on such strenuous work. Uh, 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 my advisor said that young people shouldn't stay cooped up in the academia all the time. Uh, they told me that I should take the chance to get out and see the stars in other skies. Huh. Uh, maybe I can think of it as my first internship experience? Oh, but it sure is exhausting. Hmm. Where is Farazan? Oh, she's just in there. How about you, Dory? You okay? Now, how should I justify a high price tag for a dish without any fancy ingredients? Huh. Maybe start by giving it a fancy sounding name? By the way, the whole spiel about no seafood and trying not to cook. You were trying to save money, weren't you? Uh, <laughs> uh I should have known you'd see through me. Everyone was exhausted and seasick when I made the offer last night, so I figured they probably wouldn't be able to eat all that much today. Well, you saw how that turned out. I tried placing some limitations on the order to keep costs under control, but you still found a way around my schemes. <sighs> That's what I get for not thoroughly researching the market beforehand. Hey, you're not even paying those too much of a salary. Just treat them fairly next time and don't be so stingy. Well, you're the one to talk, Paimon. You feel it whenever you get the fucking chance. Well, yeah, but that's why Paimon's qualified to talk about this. Hey, you know what? That's actually a very fucking... <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> Arzan. 
even though I didn't get to try Adeptus Temptation or Bamboo Shoot Soup, this trembling strings and rushing reeds was still quite impressive. Thank you for making it. Well, I never thought you'd take a drop away from the ruins. Well, about that. Even though newfangled contraptions are hardly my cup of tea, Dory's offer was quite enticing. She said that every time we stopped at a new harbor, I'd be free to go and pick out some ancient books at the market and bring them back to Sumeru. <laughs> I couldn't resist an offer like that. So I offered to join for the lowest possible pay to undercut all my Kasharawar competitors. Seriously, if I'd blinked, I would have missed it. Crimson Staff just launched itself a bloom pruner and sent it flying! I'd expect no less of the bona fide Beetle Battle King himself. It sounds like a truly epoch defining duel. <laughs> <sighs> the air was getting stifling, so I made some excuses and slipped away. Anyway, thanks for taking the hint earlier. I'll fill you in later. All right, let's cook. I never knew tofu allergy was even a thing. Okay, I'll I'll handle the appetizers. You take care of the main event. I can help too. Don't worry, I'm qualified. I passed Liyue's senior culinary exam once. Count Crushmore, instant kill. I never knew there were so many elite beetle fighters in Liyue. You didn't really come for the Onikabuto fighting contest, did you? <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be tardiness of the most unfashionable variety. No, in truth, this trip is part business, part leisure. Well, then how come you didn't come to Lantern right then? Every visitor has their own agenda. For some, the festivities are all the more reason to visit. For others, all the more reason to avoid the crowds. In any case, one way or another, I seem to have ended up in the right place at the right time. Now, as for the leftover tofu... Yes, I'm sure Toma will dispose of it as he sees fit. What do you mean, dispose? It was good! I have to get back to the docks as soon as this meal is done. So why did you really come to Liyue? Well, uh, thing is... I can explain. Boss recently found work as a sailor, which allowed him to hitch a ride here. After the ship docked, he had some free time to do as he pleases. He's been using that time to hang out with Grandmaster Hanakato. Just because he's here already! No other reason! Fair enough. The rations we brought were adapted for my signature moon pies. To come up with something even tastier, I gotta hand it to you. You did a great job. Still, please do drop by and try a few Stormcrest pies next time you're in town. I insist. Hmm. Ems? Ah, uh, sorry. I zoned out just now. Didn't see you coming. Well, got something on your mind then? Yeah. That food you cooked for us just now? It reminded me of the meals my grandfather used to make for me. I thought I'd forgotten how they tasted, but it all came rushing back. He used to make Liyue dishes all the time. I do my outrider training with him until the evening, then wait patiently at the dinner table. I'd sit there with the smell of delicious food wafting in from the kitchen, waiting for him to finally emerge with the goods. Sometimes we'd have Eula around for dinner, and even though she'd always find something to complain about, I could tell she really enjoyed the food. Maybe you... She remembers too. <laughs> Your words, not mine. Don't ask her about it. She'll only give you another earful. Back when I was on the expedition with the Grand Master, I was often put in charge of cooking. Under the circumstances, I could only cook some pretty crude meals. But everyone still enjoyed them a lot. Maybe passion was the secret ingredient then too. 